In the Netherlands, separating types of traffic on the busiest streets has proven to be much safer than sharing the same road space. But inevitably, the types of traffic will have to cross each other's paths. You need good junction design to make cycling attractive, convenient and safe. In most countries of the world, protected cycling infrastructure stops right before every intersection. Even when there are on-street cycle lanes, they end where you need them most, at junctions. When Dutch street designers sketch a street, they first draw the carriageway as narrow as possible. Then they add cycle tracks that flow in a way that makes cycling at high speed possible. Where the two meet, the crossing is at a right angle as much as possible. They use this design on larger traditional forearm crossroads as well. The protected cycle tracks go around the outside of such junctions, so people cycling don't have to mix with motor traffic. In every corner of the junction, the signature protective traffic island simply emerges from this design. Cycling straight on is not very hard to figure out. Cyclists continue straight forward on their path alongside the carriageway for motor traffic. The left turn is a bit more complicated. It is done in two stages. But Dutch traffic lights have more than just two green phases. Every direction gets green in turn and that makes clever timing possible. The second stage of the turn can therefore often be made right after the first. While the left turn may be more complicated, the right turn is very easy. The junction design makes it possible to pass the lights without even noticing them. Whatever time you lost in a left turn, you gain again in every right turn. The exact same design works on a T-junction as well. Cycling through the top of the T means you can simply ride past traffic lights again without stopping. Depending on the traffic volume, the design even works without traffic lights. The most important feature of this design is the space where a car can wait for other traffic without being in the way so a driver can deal with other motor traffic first and then with people cycling. But junction design developed further. Roundabouts have proven to be much safer than traditional forearm junctions. And they can have a cycle track all around them too on which people cycling can have priority over motor traffic. Such roundabouts are very easy to navigate if you are on a bicycle. They make traffic flow better and are safer for motor traffic, for people cycling and because motor traffic goes slower they are also better for the environment because of reduced noise and less exhaust fumes. Here too the space for a car to wait out of the way of other traffic enhances the safety. And this design can also be used in a much more urban environment, like here in Amsterdam. If the roundabout is very large, it is best to bypass it altogether. This roundabout in Houten has a separate level for motor traffic and one for cycling. This type of infrastructure makes a junction very safe and very easy to pass. But there's not always space for such a solution in the built-up area. Speeds at so-called turbo roundabouts are usually so high that there really is no alternative than to have cyclists bypass them in an underpass. Of course, it is best if motor traffic is forced to go up an artificial incline while people cycling can stay on ground level. Even when that is not possible, an underpass can still be preferable. In other locations, it can be best to choose an overpass. It all depends on the specific situation. When it comes to junction design, the Dutch have an array of possibilities, including cycling infrastructure, to create safer crossings.
all of which are so easy a child can use them.